Sometimes in time series modeling, a distinction is made between stochastic trends and deterministic trends. So let's look at what the differences are. So a deterministic trend is simply a linear function of time uh, where the error uh, is a stationary process. So yt is equal to a linear function of t plus e to t, where e to t is stationary. So that there has no difference in the, the d here is zero. On the other hand, a stochastic trend is exactly the same linear function of time, but the error term has a difference um, of one. That's a little d is equal to one. And that's all there is. That's the only difference between the two, but they have quite different properties, which is why they've ended up with different names. So if we difference both sides of this second equation, you'll see that the beta zero disappears, uh, has no effect at all, and the slope of the line becomes a constant. So the yt is equal to beta one plus difference of a to t, and that is a stationary process. And that helps us understand a little bit about what's going on here. So let's see what they uh, what they look like when we apply them to some data. So this is Australian air passenger traffic uh, from 1970 through to a few years ago. Uh, it's annual data, so we don't have to think about seasonality here. And you can see that the trend is not quite linear, but uh, as increasing. So if we fit a linear trend to us, which is deterministic, we just have to specify um, that we want a trend function uh, where little d is equal to zero to force the error term to be stationary. And this part here models the trend. It's a constant plus the slope parameter. If we look at the result, we get this output. So it's a linear model with an ARIMA 100 error. The, the one here has been chosen automatically. Uh, and if we can write that at those out in, in the usual equation format, uh, yt is equal to the intercept from here, the slope from here, plus an error term, and the error term is an AR1, so the phi parameter is 0.956 from here. <clears throat> so that's the deterministic model. If we do it in a stochastic way, we just have to change the d to a, to a 1, um, and we fit in and we put in a constant for the drift term, which is the slope of the trend function. So you write it like that, um, tilde 1 plus pdq d equals 1. And we get this output down here with only the one parameter. But if we write out the full equation, we can see what's going on. So the difference to data is equal to the constant plus an error. If we um, expand that and iterate, we get that yt is equal to some starting point plus 1.419 times the t. So that's where the trend comes in. And it's a pretty similar trend to what we had back here, 0.1415. Now it's 0.1419. So the slope is almost the same, but it's a very different model because it has non-stationary errors. And the error term is simply a, um, is simply a random walk like that. OK, when we come to plot the forecasts, you can see what's going on. So as I said, the slopes are pretty similar. So the point forecasts are not very different. But the prediction intervals are quite different. So the prediction interval there is much smaller than the prediction interval in blue, which is from the stochastic model. So the deterministic trend is, is much narrower. And the reason is that we are assuming we are making much stronger assumptions that what we see is going to continue into the future. Whereas with the stochastic trend, because of the differencing, it's allowing it to move around a lot more. So the two, from the two models, the point forecasts are almost identical. The prediction intervals differ. The wider prediction intervals arise because the errors are non-stationary. And in general, we don't want to be using forecasting with deterministic trends very far ahead into the future because it's making a very strong assumption that's unlikely to hold for a long period ahead. A stochastic trend is generally a safer option here if we need a trend at all because it's allowing the trend to change direction um, over time. 